An apology for being angry all the time and a gesture of generosity with my new paycheck from the Art Institute. A sweet gift for him. I bought matching towels and I framed our posters. I bought new plates and home goods, painted the kitchen, bought an area rug. In my fantasy, James liked all this. People used to tell me I had good taste. When I asked him if he liked the towels or if he had a preference, he told me he liked our current towels, the stained beige ones with 12 inch threads hanging off them. I'm really trying to focus on my health this year. Breastfeeding really takes it out of you and I don't think it's actually viable. I don't know if there are any ve vegetarian breastfeeding moms that follow me, but I just don't think it's viable in terms of like health wise. And because I wasn't originally breastfed, I think that has had some effect on my immune system. So now me breastfeeding my child is like damaging my immune system because all of my antibodies are getting sucked out of my breast milk and into her. So anytime I get sick, it takes me a lot longer to heal from it than it would have before I was breastfeeding. So I was able to like be vegetarian and nothing was wrong with me but now that I'm breastfeeding as well it's like I'm basically providing nutrients for two people it's taken a toll on my body so I'm just going to try and focus on my health a lot this year so I'm not sure where that's going to lead me in terms of my vegetarian journey and because I don't actually like meat that much I do like fish so I have started incorporating a bit of fish into my diet I'm eating some salmon because she is teething I read online that drinking chamomile tea helps it goes into breast milk it helps with the pain which is actually one of the ingredients in tea the gel is chamomilla so I presume that's a drink derivative of chamomile. That's what I've been doing. And I found this upstairs. This is actually my teddy from when I was a baby. It's in my baby book. It has a rattle and a crinkle ear. Now I can pass this down to my baby because I thought I lost this when my parents sold their house. I thought my mom left this behind in the attic because I hadn't seen it since. I just found it upstairs, so it must have been in my dad's attic. I'm here mining peanut today. Dad and Sam are gone to a wedding. We are trying to move. I haven't documented it, but that's one of the main reasons why I am so stressed out, I suppose. I, and I can't share the reasons until we actually do move. Every time I go for a viewing, I have a panic attack all the way from like the way there until I get home. I haven't been able to sleep in that apartment. I've been too scared, anxious all around, so I am losing a lot of my hair, particularly Clearly around the the uh, hairline. That's what I'm most insecure about is my huge massive five head and my big chin and my small lips so like for my forehead to actually be growing larger and larger by the day is stressing me out after i gave birth i was like oh i did, i went through such a beautiful experience i was able to birth a child like I've ne i'm never i'm never going to be insecure ever again those negative thoughts always creep in when you're feeling at your worst like you're anxious and then bad self-talk comes back and body image issues and being insecure it's a, it just all happens at once which is really annoying it's like would my brain not just give me a break? No. I've started doing my box breathing, which is in for four, hold for four, out for four. <sighs> And I just wish that sighing didn't have neg negative connotations attached to it because I go around heavily sighing all the time but I'm actually just doing a bit of box breathing. And I feel like people think that I'm giving out or I'm being passive aggressive but I'm actually just doing a bit of sighing. My glasses keep fogging up every time I'm around in town walking around so now I'm paranoid that people think I'm giving them dirty looks because I'm going around like this. So I'm just like constantly paranoid and anxious out of my head all the time like looking over my shoulder thinking that there's someone following me. This year I'm going to be focusing on, on my health. I think I said this last year but my wealth and my health so uh. Spiritually, emotionally, productivity wise, mentally. So I want to learn a lot more and I was able to, I'm nearly, I have like 10 pages left of this book. This is the fastest I think I've read a book since I gave birth because obviously when you're preoccupied with a child it's really hard to read. But I figured out a system where like if she's getting fussy and getting bored I'm not giving her enough attention. I just read to her. So then we're actually both reading and it's good for her cognitive development as well. So it's good two in one and especially for her wake windows. It works best for us. 
for me and her is that if she's asleep every two and a half hours and I'm not I'm not getting stressed out about like relative like times if that makes sense so I haven't downloaded now my foot isn't on the table it's hanging off do I sit in my lap yeah I love that the new year is like a good stepping stone in terms of it's a solidified time for like a rebirth a renewal force you to like look ret retrospectively at your life and look in ways that you can improve it I guess I do enjoy having a marker for when that should all begin because you know when you're out of school or university and there's no structure in terms of like a beginning or an end it's good to have so a general marker for a new beginning or to like start over again so I do like the idea of new year's resolutions and making new goals and plans for yourself but I also don't want to like let that go after three months so having new uh, goals for for each season is a way better, more realistic way to set manageable goals for yourself. She's getting so good at sitting up though, isn't she? Look at her.
Do you want some of the serum? What is it for? It's moisturising serum. Sorry, it's so cold. Mm. <laughs> this back in my dad's it's in the same sort of realm as milk fed if you read milk fed you know it's just a funny internal monologue self-deprecating we just do a tesco order because there's a few things that we can't get in little or duns like missy's um cat litter and i need to get yeast because we just got a bread maker for christmas so we're gonna make our own homemade bread i'm just gonna watch emily in paris guilty i'm obsessed with emily in paris like i'm writing down little places that she goes to for when i go to paris in april I only got a few things in the Stevens Day sales. I got her one of those like steamer puree, one of those machines where you make like pureed food. It's probably totally not necessary. Like I could have just steamed it and then used the blender, you know, but it's like nice, tight and compact. So you can just do it all in one. And I'm really excited to make her own pure, uh, puree. So I've been like taking yeah. pictures of baby food that I've seen in shops for like combinations and inspiration. She'll only be on like fruit purees in the next month or so and like baby porridge which I'll just mix with my breast milk and then we'll try to do baby ledwini. Uh, but she seems to be really interested in food like anytime I'm eating she's kind of staring at it and going to grab it so that's a good sign. I got one of those seats that you like attach to a chair or you can place it on a bed or place it on a couch because we actually don't have a table here so I was just gonna like place it down on the couch so I can sit in front of her instead of like standing and feeding her. <laughs> I've gotten my fucking screen time down to two hours. It was like, it was really bad. Before Jason was off work, I'd say it was probably four to five hours, sometimes six hours screen time a day. When she was um, having a nap, I'd be so exhausted that I just, I wouldn't have the energy to read or like do anything else. So I just lay there on my phone scrolling. But now that Jason's off work, I haven't, I literally haven't been on my phone at all. It's like one to two hours, like to answer texts, to edit stuff, answer, answer emails. And that's basically it. I don't even do that much of scrolling. I watch a few stories, but I love going on Pinterest as well. I'm really enjoying Pinterest at the moment, but I haven't been going on my phone that often. I'm really proud of myself because usually to try cut down my I'm so extreme like to cut down my hours I'm like I need to delete all my apps whereas like I have no I don't trust myself enough believe that I don't have enough self-control when actually I do obviously have the power there to give it up whenever I want but I have been doing Irish on Duolingo because I want to start saying Irish words to her and it would just be nice to learn together because I'd like her to have Irish but also it's just like I, why not why shouldn't I use it in my everyday life as well or make an effort to I know I'm doing the no January no spend January but it doesn't count if I buy it in December so I booked for us mum and baby yoga yeah uh, I'm so excited this is gonna be my first like mom thing that I'm going to I might make a friend I might make a mom friend they also do a thing called baby jam but I I tried to book that but um it just wouldn't let me it wouldn't let me go through the, through the page so that's like a thing where they play instruments and stuff for babies <laughs> That would be fun to go as well. I also booked a baby on board screening for me and Jason to go because I haven't been to the movies. I haven't been to the movies in since I saw on Colleen Kuhn in the IFI. <laughs> Whatever that was in the cinema, whatever that was in the cinema. Over summer, probably, like July. I haven't been able to see anything. So I got tickets to go see Matilda the musical. And it's, it's a baby on board screening, so you can bring your baby. Well, guys, once you Google things, there's actually a lot of stuff that you can bring your baby to. It's just annoying because they were showing shit movies as well. I actually emailed the seller because I wanted to see Banshees of, Inisir of Inisirin. Is it the Banshee or Banshees of Inisirin? I don't know. The Banshee. Oh, I think she's hungry. I wanted to see the Banshee of Inisirin and I texted them. I texted them, I emailed them and I was like, do you have any screen the baby on board screenings? They were like, oh, we're not showing this because it's 18s on the baby on board. And I was like, but you're showing like 15s movies. And they were like, yeah, but it's 15A. And I was like, but they're babies. <laughs> but um, I understand that. Obviously, it's just like the law. It's That's the law and that's a fact. 
You know the harnesses that you put on chil children? I remember seeing those in public, obviously before I had kids, I was like 18, 19, and I'd be like, what kind of sick fuck puts a lead on their child? And then once she started, like, she's like kind of half rolling over, I'm shitting myself for if she, like, I just, I just see danger everywhere, and I just know that she's gonna be dying to run around because she always wants to be lifted up, she always wants to be out moving and doing stuff. So I just know she's gonna be one of those kids that like runs away laughing from you on the street. I'm kind of like pro the pro child harnesses now. And I saw one in Dad and, uh, my dad and stepmom's house. I didn't know that, I don't know if they used one in Cora, but they also seem like a bit of a health hazard because what if you like pull on them by accident? and then they fall over, you know, fall backwards. So I don't know, I don't know how it works, but uh, it's just like keep track of them. You know, when they're not tall enough to hold your hand yet, I'm just, sh I'm just shitting myself all the time that she's gonna hurt herself. But at the same time, like Jason is scared putting some pieces of clothing on her cause he's scared of hurting her. Where in that sense, I'm like, she's not that fragile. Like you just have to, you know, pull her and you know, you know when they're real stiff when they're babies and they're, they don't like stretch their arms out. I'm like, you just have to fucking shove it in. And I also like hold her, the arse ways constantly like I'm, if I'm doing stuff with one another hand I'm like holding her like a football with the other in that sense I'm like she's grand but whenever she's not around me if I'm not holding her if she's just lying down something I'm like oh, 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 like constantly thinking that she's gonna launch herself off something which hopefully you won't do but she's about to I'm gonna cozy up now 